Despite whatever happened to our country, our country is a beautiful place. And this afternoon, what you see here this evening, show where people um, really love the country and they come out to support whatever goes on around here and for democracy. We don't want this kind of thing that happened in our country the other day. We want to be free. We want to have to be able to come and have a little lime and to be free and that kind of thing. We want no negative things happening to our country. From public comment and private conversations, it is fair to say that while most Trinidadians abhor the violent methods members of the Jamaat al-Muslimin used to try to effect political change, many also feel that the group's leader, Yasin Abubakar, articulated some of their grievances. Among those concerns is the imposition of a value-added tax, or VAT, on certain items. The VAT became a controversial issue even before it was put into place. And actually the whole intention of um, replacing the existing taxation system or modifying the existing taxation system and to introduce VAT was to make a, create a neutral tax that was more equitable based on purchases. And in fact, to create the situation in which personal income tax and corporate income taxes were reduced. In the, sen in, the, in the case of reducing corporate tax, the intention was to provide more money for investment in the business community and not to place a, an over heavy tax burden in the wrong places on the business community. In the case of personal income tax, the intention was to reduce the personal income tax so we can have more take-home income. Both of those things we were able to achieve, but I think that there was a whole wave of negativity and, and negative publicity that surrounded the introduction of VAT. And people hardly tried to make an assessment of what was real and what was propaganda or what was uh, simply negative criticism. The amount of tax, which is now 15%, and the number of items that came under the control of VAT was in fact under review and is now under review and we were looking towards the end of the year possibly for rolling back some of the items like school books like drugs and so on uh, f which uh, placed a heavy burden on the le more depressed areas of the of the citizenry the tax structure that pertains to trinidad is called p-a-y-e pay as you earn yet People who are not employed and have to beg, thief, and borrow to feed their families have to pay 15%, although they're not employed. We have been able last year, for example, to take 55,000 people off the tax paying list. So that 55,000 people pay less taxes in Trinidad. And by my own calculations, about 50% of the working class people in Trinidad pay less taxes or have been affected, affected in a positive way by the government uh, tax reform program. So while people, for example, say that the government has imposed VAT, for example, mm -hmm. people do not say concomitantly that the government has reduced the tax rates from as high as 60% to 35%. And in the same vein, that uh, 55,000 people do not now pay taxes. Things are very terrible now in the country. It is harder and tighter on the small man. Whilst we used to come out here and sell on, on Frederick Street, we cannot come out and sell no more. Why? Why? Because we have to stay indoors. The shop, those people that own their shops in town here, they say they don't want the poor man outside on the streets. Many people have been retrenched after 10, 15, 20 years until now has not received any severance pay. Are you going to take part in the great race tomorrow? All those boats that cost half a million, quarter million dollars? Or is it not a fact that you don't have any food to put on your children, on the, on, on, on the table for your children in the morning? A lot of people wasn't drinking milk. A lot of babies were dying from malnutrition and all these things. Why? Because your parents wasn't getting work. People do not uh, remember that it's this government which uh, reintroduced the school feeding program, which had been shut down by the previous government, the previous government in June of 1986. And as from the coming school term, almost 53,000 students will be benefiting from hot meals in, in the school system. And I think that is an important development also. Uh, you, you look at uh, the manner in which we have been able to keep, keep
keep the cost of, of food down in the country as a whole. You see, while, while people talk about social problems in Trinidad, the fact is that we have done quite a lot in terms of uh, giving back to the population. And um, maybe there's a need to give more. A lot of commentators looked to the government's program with the IMF as a possible reason for the uprising which followed the, the attempted coup. Do you give any credence to those theories? Well, I think if you, I think one can argue the case, but I don't think that this particular event is related to that. I think, if anything, a number of things were used to justify, you know, the kind of uh, military action by these extremists. Uh, they used the cover of religion, they used the IMF policies, they, used, they said that there were a lot of, there was a lot of poverty in the country, there was high unemployment and so on. And this was the cover, the guise under which they did this violent act. Uh, I don't think that we should give any credibility to that. I think that, I think there's no question that the IMF programs cause uh, some pressure on the population. This is something we've always acknowledged. Which is why, as I said, we were reassessing some of the programs and trying to come up with uh, social support measures. And uh, in fact, we had put into place and were expanding a number of programs having to do with the young people especially. Uh, how do you get jobs in a society? The only way you can get jobs really is through investment in a situation in which the state was under pressure and under siege, financial and economic pressure and siege. And the impetus had, the, 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 the onus really was on the private sector now for expansion. And this was moving. We were, just before I, I left on my Far East mission, for instance, I did one or two interviews in which I indicated where the investment, about $300 million worth of it locally, was going to take place in about five or six areas in the manufacturing sector. That is where the expansion was going to come from and the jobs created, and with that construction, a number of things in the free zones and so on. Maybe things, the positive things did not happen as fast as they needed to happen. But I think one must remember that we had a cut in the price of oil. The income of this country was reduced by half in 1973. And we had seven consecutive years of decline between 1973 and 1979. In 1973, sorry, not 1973, 1983 and 1989, um, following the oil boom of 1973. Um, ironically, 1990 was to be the year of positive economic growth. And this happened then. What I am hoping is that the momentum will not be interrupted by what has happened. The Trinidad and Tobago government has identified tourism as a catalyst to stimulate growth in other key areas of the economy. It's an industry which the government has only recently started to develop, and it saw its best year ever in 1989. We have just about 2,000 rooms in Trinidad and Tobago, and therefore we are looking not for the mass tourism market. Th this is a misconception that people have about our tourism trust, that we are looking for a mass tourism market. We are not doing that at all. We believe that one has to be careful in the quality of tourism one, one uh, invites into one's country. And we are very concerned about ecotourism, the impact of tourism on the environment. And therefore we are looking at what we have as assets, our flora and fauna, we are looking at our, our beaches, and I, I, I want to say that the kind of tourism we want to attract to our beaches are, are people who care, care for the environment of the beaches themselves, and who understand the, the value we place on, on our, our beaches and our rivers and, and so on. The Caroni Bird Sanctuary is one of the best places to observe the flora and fauna of Trinidad. Four different species of mangrove grow in profusion here. White, black, red, and yellow. It is home to migratory birds like the southern lapwing, which winters here, the yellow leg, and the resplendent scarlet ibis, which flies home to roost at sunset. The fish that thrive in the swamp's brackish water and the tiny crabs that scuttle up the mangroves are some of the other inhabitants of this primeval world and the northern range is a silent observer.